This is the Chloe Cast, Episode 4, G2A is in the wrong, and other stories. Hey there, everybody. Been a while since I've done one of these episodes. And just wanted to let you know exactly what's been going on with the channel. I've since switched to a system where I have no fixed schedule. And I think that's actually working out for me better. It helps. It will help me improve the quality of the episodes I'm putting out of Chloe the Professor and especially gamers because I realize now that I really bit off a little more than I could chew with gamers. I thought I could use basically. I write fan fiction for anime and other properties. I write fan fiction. I have a profile on fanfiction.net. Most people know me for writing stories. And I write pretty good ones and I get pretty good reviews. So I thought, you know, I do good humor writing fan fiction. So why can I turn that to doing a, a comedy series about uh, gaming gamers? Well, turns out that's a lot harder than uh, I expected. Now, I've, I'm very familiar with the uh, with the subject matter that I work with with fan fiction. They're, they're a series that I'm a big fan of. But this is something new. This is a new idea that I just came up with. And you said, well, if it's your new idea, why don't you know how to work with it? Well, did Jerry Seinfeld know where to go with his show when he was developing it? How long did it take him to develop his program for TV? You know, how long did it take, you know, how long did it take, you know, for people like, you know, Eddie Murphy to come up with his comedy skits or George Carlin for that matter. They just don't pull that stuff out of their heads. They work on it for a long time. And so I tried jumping into it pretty rapidly because I've already, I'm already, you know, working diligently up here on ideas for my stories. But I only just started working on this stuff for uh, gamers. And that's the problem. I realized that I jumped the gun. I released the, the trailer and the pilot episode too soon. I wanted to get it out there too too quickly. And I was impatient, basically. I should have waited a lot longer to launch the series. A lot longer. To let it develop. The first episode, I'm told, and I agree with them, it was funny, but it was very dry very dry so I will work on another pilot it may take me a little while longer I'll work on another pilot episode and see how things go from there and being on no schedule also helps me improve flowing the professor now how I make those episodes is another problem this channel makes no money I also do videos for another channel called Gamers Bay, and they make no money either. Even though we have ads, the number of views we get, the number of subscri you know, subscribers that we both have, uh, and combined with that, we, you know, we get, Gamers Bay gets good numbers. Gamers Bay gets good views. We do a lot of stuff on retro gaming. So they get a lot of good views, but the amount that you actually get from ads is very small. Ad revenue is very small. Unless you get a hundred unless you get more than a hundred thousand views a day. You know, your revenue from ads is pitiful. And you know, we're both less than Gamers, Gamers Bay is less than 300 subscribers. I'm less than 
Um, I don't have that many subscribers myself. So, we're not making anything. We're not making anything from the channel. And I need new equipment. I need better technology. I need a better camera. Right now I'm just using a cheapo uh, $20 webcam that I got off Amazon. Not a bad webcam, but I want something better. Something that, you know, I don't have to lug my computer around to use. You know, like a regular standalone camera that I can just port vid I, I can port the you know the the video onto my PC with I need the regular camera and there are regular cameras that you can use as a webcam you can take it on the go and record with and that's what I want because I want to be able to go to places and be able to record shows record episodes I want to be able to go to you know no, screw attacks event that they have down in in Houston or Dallas or whatever wherever that's at. I want to be able to go down there and record some stuff. Be able to attend the event. Maybe go to some of the anime conventions that are here in Texas and do some recordings there. Do some episodes. I want to be able to go out and do that. And right now with the equipment I have, I can. I've got a cell phone with a pretty good camera, but you know, that's limited quality. You know, I don't have good audio gear. I have, I have at least this. It is my, um, my Yeti microphone. I've got that. I've got a somewhat decent microphone that I record Chloe and the Professor with. This is a, this is a actually pretty decent mic. It's, it's a cheapie. It's a cheapie, but the quality is really good. The recording quality is really good. It's a lot better than what I was using. I was using a, a gaming headset for recording the audio, the, the audio for Chloe and the Professor before. And I do all the voice work on the show. I use um, Morphvox, which is a voice changing software that's available on Steam. I use that to change my voice because I'm the only one that does the show. I use Plotagon and Plotagon, the way it works is you set up a scene, you add music and sound effects, and then you put, and then it's like, uh, you write it like a script. You have the, the character, you give them an expression, you write some dialogue. By default, it does um text to speech but there's a little microphone icon at the end where you can record dialogue and that's what i do with the episode i used to do i used to just use the text to speech that's how the show originally started and then i started recording the dialogue and using the voice changing software at some point and people liked that better but Plotagon is extremely limited in what you can do. The characters can't get up and walk around. I have to, if I want to change where they're sitting, I have to create a new scene and put them in place. And that creates delays that I have to edit out when I edit the episode. And also I cannot port the videos directly to a file. I have to, um, render and export out to Plotagon's own uh, social network. Then I have to go to the website, go to the website, go to my video, download it, process it through Handbrake. Otherwise the audio and video audio and video sync will be broken when I put it into my video editor and then video then edit the episodes and export bumping up the resolution to 720p if i go any higher than that it'll look like pixelated junk because plotagon's resolution is dismally low it puts out at like 480 somewhere around 480p 
and I'm bumping up to 720, and then I send it to, uh, then I send the whole thing up to YouTube, and YouTube munches it pretty bad. Uh, it's surprising how badly YouTube munches stuff so that it's streamable on their site. I don't see how anybody else produces videos of such high quality on their site with their algorithms munching things so badly. Anyway, so I am work with what I can work with because I'm on a fixed income. You know, I need to upgrade my PC. I've got a dual core multi-threaded PC. I have an older video card that I want to upgrade so that I can do better um, Let's Play videos that I do for Gamers Bay. And I'm gonna do more gaming videos for this channel. But I'm going to be doing uh, throughout the week, what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna do live streams of Final Fantasy because I want to prepare for the next expansion. I did one, I didn't have Twitch, I didn't have Twitch set up properly to automatically export to YouTube. So I've changed that. I changed that. So now it's exporting properly to YouTube now. So when I do stream again, I'll stream uh, hopefully this weekend some more gameplay. I'll be going through more be going through uh, some dungeons and also through the um, Palace of the Dead to earn more tomes to get my higher level gear that I need. So I'll be streaming that on Twitch and once that's done that will be exported up to YouTube up to my YouTube channel for anyone else to watch who doesn't uh, doesn't watch the live stream so that will bring more content to the channel because I've been I've been doing a lot more work on gamers Bay helping them build up and in turn gain in turn gamers Bay promotes my channel promotes Chloe and the professor for me um, helping them out producing content for the channel so there's that and the other thing I wanted to talk about is what's going on with G2A. Now, unless you've lived under a rock or you don't play games at all, you probably haven't heard of G2A. G2A is a, um, a marketplace where you can buy Steam keys, buy Steam keys for PC games. And some of the keys are legit. You know, you buy, you let's say you buy a game bundle, which sometimes you can find bundles of games. And there's a game on the bundle that you already have. Well, you'll get an extra key. Well, you used to. Steam now reduces the price on it. But it used to be where if you bought a bundle, you got an extra key that you don't want. So, what do you do? You, the only option you have is to give the key to somebody, give that extra key to somebody so they can play the game. That's your only option. I've done that once. I've done that with an extra key for Portal 2 at one point. But G2A lets you sell those extra keys. And there are legitimate businesses where you can go and you can buy Steam keys in bulk. Or resale. That's how a lot of other online stores get their Steam keys from. They buy them in bulk from legitimate bulk um, bulk sellers. There are sites where you can act that do nothing but sell keys for specific games in large quantities. That's how you know companies like Amazon can sell games for Steam on their games for their Steam platform, for the Steam platform on their site. Sometimes they do that. Where you'll see, you'll purchase it and you'll see the Steam icon next to the game when you buy it. That's where they get those keys from. So, the whole thing with G2A though, 
whole thing with them is that some of the keys aren't legit. Some of the keys were obtained with stolen credit cards. And there's an excellent article that explains exactly all the things that's happening with that. Why it's a problem. Written by Lars Doucette. He's a developer. He's actually he's an actual game developer. He developed Defender's Quest. And his article is it's not very long. He goes into the four currencies theory, a quote that he did from an article that he wrote before. It's a very popular article. And the four currencies are money dollars, time dollars, pain in the butt dollars, and integrity dollars. And he basically says, instead of buying from G2A, pirate the game instead. It's better to pirate the game than to actually buy from G2A. Because if you buy from G2A and you buy a stolen key, not only are there victims from someone who had their credit card information stolen, but the game developers are victims, the publishers are victims, Steam is a victim, and you're a victim because you just bought a key that was invalid, that has been deactivated, a key that doesn't work. Now, as of the writing of this article, G2A had a service called G2A Shield that you actually had to pay for. They say you don't have to pay for it anymore. I haven't seen any proof of that yet. Total Biscuit did a video, did another video. He mentions an older video that Total Biscuit did about G2A before in this article from 2016. But there was another one, another video rant that Total Biscuit did concerning the whole breakdown of the deal between G2A and Gearbox because of all of this crap that's still ongoing. This is this is something new. If you if you heard about this whole issue because of what happened with Gearbox, this is nothing new. This is not a new issue. This is an ongoing issue. And G2A is still allowing the sale of these you know stolen keys. And Lars makes a good argument that Piracy is not theft. Piracy is infringement of someone's copyright to have someone's copyright, which is essentially a temporary monopoly on the description, on the, on the distribution of a IP. That's how he words it. That's essentially how he words it. And I agree with him on that point. I agree with him on it on that point. Piracy isn't is not theft. I agree with him on that. What it happened with on G2A, that is theft. That is something actually being taken away. Money is being actually being stolen and being handed to people who who stole credit card information. Whereas with piracy, you're not actually stealing anything. You're making a copy of something. You're obtaining something without money, but you're not actually taking something away other than, you know, developers not getting revenue. They're not, you're getting it into your hands and they aren't being able to exercise their, their right under copyright to distribute it to you. So I agree with him on that point. G2A in response to the ultimatum that in the response to the ultimatum that Gearbox gave them said that their G2A shield, which is supposed to protect people from when they buy a key that's been stolen, supposed to where they can get either get a refund or they can get a legitimate key given to them in, in um, 
to replace the one that was stolen. G2A also showed reluctance to publish APIs that would allow studios to determine if keys were stolen. And while it it's a good idea, while it looks like a good idea on paper to publish APIs that would allow studios to determine if keys are stolen, I do reluctantly, I do reluctantly have to agree with them on the reasons why they don't want to. They don't want to because they know that if they do, the studios will abuse it. The publishers will abuse it. They will pull keys for games that are discounted instead of pulling the keys for games that are that were obtained illegitimately. And I agree with them. There is that risk. And I agree with the reasons why they don't want to publish APIs for, for that. That's a legitimate fear. That's a legitimate risk. That's the only thing that I will agree with G2A on. I will agree with them wholeheartedly on that. There, that is a real danger. Because, you know, essentially you can't trust the studios to do something right. I mean, we can't trust them. We can't trust most of the AAA studios to produce games that are finished. We can't trust most of the AAA studios to produce games that are even finished. They release games that are broken, that are a broken mess, that have incomplete content. And then they'll turn around and they will release paid DLC that fills in the gaps that should have been filled at launch. EA is known for this. Activision is sometimes known for this. And Ubisoft is really known for this. But EA is probably the worst that's known for this. So, um, I'm, I'm getting into an, incon I know I'm getting into a rant here on this but I will put a link to this article it is from last year some of the information may or may not be um, completely accurate from it but it will give you a good idea of exactly what's going on with G2A why you shouldn't buy from them either buy directly from Steam or good old games or you know if, if you gotta don't don't um, give money to these crooks. I mean, if you just don't give a damn and you want to get the game anyway, pirate it. Don't give these guys their money. Don't give G2A, don't give these thieves money. You know, if you're going to obtain it any other way and you're not going to buy it for, from Steam or good old games don't give crooks money anyway that's the episode for today there will be a Chloe and the Professor coming in uh, very soon and gamers once I resolve a lot of the issues with the show thanks for watching if you liked this episode if you like the content on this channel please consider subscribing give me a thumbs up and if you have any ideas suggestions you know anything uh, put them in the comments below uh, you can also contact me via my uh, social network contacts that you see above Twitter G Google Plus and Facebook so I've been Mike and I will see you guys next time.